Today's episode is all about the Native Plant Society of Texas. Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to this episode of the Shades of Green Show. Our special guest today is Carol Clark. She's the past president of the Collin County chapter of the Native Plant Society of Texas. And she's here today to tell us about the society and all the benefits of planting native plants in your landscape. So let's get to the interview. Hello, Carol, and welcome. It's glad to finally meet you uh, again. I think we've met at the nursery once or twice, but uh, glad you're here today. It's good to be here. All right. So uh, first of all, uh, introduce yourself for anyone who may not have heard of you. I've heard about you for years as the butterfly lady and the native plant lady. Uh, you've been, you're known for giving uh, topics and clinics on, on a variety of uh, topics, giving clinics on a variety of subjects um, all over the area. But uh, let folks know who you are. Well, I grew up spending a lot of time in the outdoors, and I've loved it since I was a tiny person. Um, that was just the way my family rolled. And uh, I moved to Texas in about 1996 and realized that everything I knew about plants and animals didn't count here. <laughs> and I was going to have to learn a whole lot of new stuff if I wanted to stop killing plants. Um, so I took myself off to the Native Plant Society of Texas, where I found people who taught me an awful lot. And uh, now I'm a Texas Master Naturalist and Monarch Watch Conservation Specialist and a longtime member and supporter of the Native Plant Society of Texas. Awesome. Well, we certainly deal with that at the nursery almost daily because there's so many people moving into the area from uh, different parts of the country. I mean, last week alone, I spoke to somebody from Michigan. I spoke to two <laughs> couples from California, one from Southern California, one from Northern California, and they all are in that similar position that you were once upon a time where it's like, what grows here? Exactly. <laughs> because it is a different world between our climate and our soil. Uh, there are challenges of plenty. If you grew up almost anywhere else in the country where you could just throw something in the ground and it would grow. Yeah, Texas is a world apart. It is. So I'll uh, let you take over and tell us all about the Native Plant Society of Texas. I'd love to do that. Let me see if I can get shared and we'll start. <clears throat> okay, so the basic mission of the Native Plant Society of Texas is to promote research, conservation, and the use of native plants. Um, and we do that through outreach, example, and um, you know, formalized education. We have a lot of ways that we can work. It was founded in 1981 uh, by people who, in their own words, just like to go out and look at native plants and realize that as Texas grew, uh, these plants could be in trouble. Uh, let's see, it won't advance. Let's see if I can get that going. So who are we? We are an extremely diverse group of people. Everybody from rank amateurs who just moved here from Minnesota uh, to botanical professionals. And there are no special requirements to join. Uh, so if you're interested, we're interested in having you. What can we do for you? All kinds of things. I found inspiration. I learned a lot from monthly meeting speakers, I had all kinds of network opportunities and the opportunities to acquire plants that I might not otherwise have been able to find. Um, there are field trips, educational resources, both in person and online. Uh, we can actually send somebody out to help you understand what's growing if you have a piece of land. Um, there is just so much that you can gain from the Native Plant Society. This uh, background that I'm sitting in front of is actually one of our native prairies, very local here in Collin County. And this is what a typical Blackland Prairie chalky site would have looked like before it was heavily disturbed. Uh, by human use. And there's just so little of this left. Uh, but if you want to go see these places, the Native Plant Society can take you to uh, natural spaces that are still quite nice. This is another one. Uh, this one is at Climber Meadow, which is uh, a nature conservancy site also in Collin County. So what are our major programs? How do we work? We have several. 
uh, key programs and then lots of little things we do. One of those you'll hear the initials for a lot, NLCP. It stands for Native Landscape Certification Program. And then we have the BBMT, lots of initials. Uh, that is the Bring Back the Monarchs to Texas Committee and program. I happen to chair that, which fits well with my work as a Monarch Watch Conservation Specialist. We host spring and fall symposiums to learn more about our native habitats across the state and the native plants that live there. And we have a quarterly full color magazine. We also supply grants and scholarships to promising students at the undergraduate and graduate levels who are majoring in a field that has something to do with native plants. And then we provide programs to your clubs and groups um, some formalized, some less formal field trips and other resources online. So we'll cover these in a bit more detail. The Native Landscape Certification Program is a, is a wonderful program that's been copied in other places because of its success. Level one is the key level and everyone must start with level one before they're allowed to sign up and take the remaining levels. Uh, this is a certification program that provides you education about how to use native plants in your landscape, uh, how to help others use native plants in their landscapes. And if you're a business person like a landscaper, you're allowed to put this on your card. If you train with the master naturalist, that's not a thing you could put on your business card, but this certification is designed to be used in advertising as well as um, just to give you the information. All of these classes can be taken uh, for certification or just for attendance. You don't have to take the test and pass the test if you really don't want to. But each class is designed to introduce you to a palette of 50 plants that go with that class. Each class comes with that list of plants uh, in a big spreadsheet with their attributes and also comes with a live walk. So you can go out and see as many of those plants as possible. Uh, so level one is just an introduction to native plants in landscaping. Level two, you actually get to design your own landscape with colored pencils and paper in class um, under the watchful eye of some excellent landscape designers. Level three is all about the maintenance and installation of your native landscape. And level four is stewardship regarding larger landscapes, things like prescribed burns and fire in the landscape. Um, so these are all very different courses, but they work hand in hand. And with each level, you get 50 new plants. Uh, level five is in blue because it's a little different. It's beyond the four certification levels. Um, and that is just one that you can take for your enjoyment, landscaping for birds. And it's a very popular class as well. Right now, some of these have gone virtual um, while we're all dealing with COVID fallout. Uh, but usually they are live. And in the future, there may be some hybrid options. Uh, if you go to our website, npsot.org, you will find under education information about the NLCP programs that are being offered, the when and the where. These are offered around the state and the plants do change depending on which region you're in. Uh, so those companion classes right now is just landscaping for birds, uh, but that may actually expand to have some pollinator classes and so forth as well. All right, our next big program is the Bring Back the Monarchs to Texas program. And this is actually a joint program of Monarch Watch and the Native Plant Society of Texas. Uh, they cooked this idea up because their interests are so closely aligned. But one of the big things we do every year as a committee, um, in, in addition to education where we go out and speak to groups, um, is the Monarch Garden Grant Program. And I'm happy to say the new application for 2022 just went up this week. The press release will be coming out Friday. And so we have just opened a new grant season. If you're a member of an organization that wants to put a monarch butterfly slash pollinator demonstration garden in a public place, 
we may have some funds available that you can use for that. So check out our garden grant program. Lots of more information on the net about that. Our grants and scholarships. The undergraduate scholarship is the Kate Hill House Scholarship. Um, and we have some incredible young people who have qualified for those scholarships in recent years that are doing fantastic work at college. Uh, but the Ann Miller Gonzalez graduate research uh, grants are also really exciting. Right now, there is one of our uh, graduate students that we support who is researching a target method for KR blue stem to eradicate that where it has spread in the landscape. And that will be a game changer throughout Texas when that spray becomes available. Another thing we do is offer a symposium in the spring and in the fall where you can hear experienced uh, speakers talk about either their landscapes or ecosystems in Texas or maybe specific plants. Um, lots of fun speakers at our spring and fall symposiums. Uh, so for the last year or so, they've been virtual, uh, but we'll go back live perhaps when we get a chance. One of the advantages of the virtual symposium is that it's not far from your desk. And so uh, you don't have to travel to the panhandle or something like that to, uh, to reach the symposium. Our field trips are a lot of fun, and this can vary depending on which chapter you associate with. When you join at the state level, you're free to associate with any chapter or chapters that you choose. Um, and we do have about 35 chapters statewide, so you can sort of look for one in your region. This is a field trip from the Collin County chapter. You can see children are welcome, and they'd always be welcome at our meetings as well. And we are investigating a native chalk prairie in Collin County that's incredibly diverse. In spite of those harsh conditions, there are some beautiful, beautiful plants growing there. And those are not dandelions that you're looking at. Those are Barbara's buttons. Number three examples of our quarterly magazine. Lots of good information, sometimes about regions that you may not get to visit in our quarterly magazine. Um, and if you do get to visit, these will get you ready to travel there. That magazine is included with all memberships. Another thing that's on our website under the resources tab is um, regional plant lists. These are fantastic. They're taken from the Native Landscape Certification Program's level one classes for each area. And you can simply go there and download the list. So when you're shopping at Shades of Green, you can take your list with you. Uh, you will have spreadsheets under those tabs that look like this. And they include all kinds of attributes about these plants, their height, their spread, their bloom season, their color, and their value in the landscape. Sometimes that's for wildlife and sometimes it has fabulous fall color. There are also places to help you find nurseries that really sell a lot of native plants. We do have some partner nurseries in our NICE program, our NICE program. Um, and there are lists of those nurseries here. Carol, would you uh, elaborate just a bit on the NICE program and let people know what that acronym stands for? I sure will. It's coming up soon. Okay. Um, so locally, you might find that your plant chapter, your native uh, Plant Society chapter also supports rescue digs. This was one from spring of 2021. Uh, we were told that there was some road widening happening and that it was a very destructive process. It was just simply being bulldozed and scraped and dug out. Um, and these incredible native plants, this Baptisia australis or false blue indigo, uh, were going to be destroyed. Uh, one day after we were told that, we got a call from a researcher uh, with a horticultural department at a university asking if we knew where he might acquire some of these plants for propagation. And we said, boy, have we got a deal for you. Let's go rescue those plants that are just ahead of the bulldozer. Um, so sometimes 
you know, we're simply plugged in with other people who can help us find these rescue situations. Kind of hard to do if you don't have a, a network of plant loving friends. Sometimes we participate in seed collection activities very much like the rescue digs. Um, we'll get information that someone is in need of seeds and somebody has seeds and we'll just mobilize a small group of people to get out there with our paper bags and collect seeds for transportation to new locations that really need them. This is a way to help restore some of our native landscapes or restore some of our pasture lands to more native uh, grass assortments. Uh, that's me on my private wildlife refuge and we were probably collecting little blue stem that day. Here's that nice program. So uh, not too many years ago, this was called Natives Instead of Common Exotics, and it was felt that that was a little harsh, maybe a little bit in your face. And so we're still using the acronym, but it has a new meaning. Natives Improving and Conserving Environments, and they sure do. Uh, they provide just the kinds of nectar and pollen that your native pollinators will need. And um, so we like to promote those. That's, that's sort of who we are and what we do. But we do have these partner nurseries that agree to display signage on some of the plants that we are featuring at that time. That's usually something that's blooming in that season. So for instance, the mealy blue sage might have a nice sign on it. And this is what it means. Natives improve and conserve environments. Um, and of course, nurseries have a choice of whether to participate in that or not. Uh, but we can get them a little extra publicity if they decide that they want to be a partner nursery. If you join your local chapter, of course, how they operate is pretty much up to them. But our chapter in Collin County, uh, we do potlucks and we have garden tours of member gardens and other gardens that feature native plants. Uh, we do field trips to excellent locations. And these field trips are precious because uh, some of these native locations are in danger of development and they are disappearing at an alarming clip. So this is kind of one of those see it before it's gone opportunities. Um, and, and it is frightening how fast we're eliminating species here in North Texas. There are also some uh, uh, backstage tours at places like Arboretums or the Botanical Research Institute of Texas in Fort Worth. That's what BRIT means, Botanical Research Institute of Texas. Um, and those can be a lot of fun. If they know you're with the Native Plant Society and you go as a group, you can often see things um, that the public is not invited to participate in. We talked about the plant rescues. Some chapters also host plant sales. There are several in the Dallas area that do. Our chapter doesn't host a plant sale. We usually help with the plant sale up at the Herd Museum in McKinney. But there are also plant giveaways and plant swaps depending on your chapter. Um, one of my favorite things is the speakers. Those speakers can be really diverse. You can hear about native oaks one uh, week, and then the next month you might be hearing about how to burn a prairie safely and how to plan uh, a prairie burn. Um, and I got to confess, when we had somebody from the Oak Society come, I thought, hey, you know, Oaks, oh, that sounds a little boring. I already sort of know the local Oaks. What can I learn from him? And I came away astounded by the wealth of information that he gave us in one short hour. So the speakers are lots of fun and they come from all over the place. Um, and then again, some chapters will host seed swaps once or twice a year. Our chapter, the Collin County chapter, meets at the Herd Museum most months. We don't meet in November or December because we simply found it's hard for people to commit to being there in those months. Um, and 
We usually meet at 7 p.m., but a couple of meetings per year might have a time shift. Usually there's a May plant walk around the grounds of the Herd Museum, and that starts earlier at 6 because we like to be able to, you know, use as much daylight as possible and get to the far edges and not come back by flashlight. So uh, some of those meetings may start a little earlier. The safest way to find out if we're meeting in person and what time that meeting starts and who the speaker would be, would be to visit our website. You can find us at the general NIPSOT website for the state and then go to the find a chapter and click that link. Or you can use nipsot.org slash WP slash Collin County and go directly to our own website. And I think I have just a few pictures of some things our chapter is uh, doing pretty often. This is a, a hayride. And uh, after that, there's a fabulous potluck. And boy, can our chapter cook. Um, but this hayride goes out to uh, two or three fabulous uh, native prairie locations in North Texas. And this is just one of those prairies. This is right across the road from where that wagon is parked. And as soon as we're done investigating all the goodies in this incredibly diverse field of native plants, we head down to the main loop. And this is the scene that greets us there. Um, so this is a private prairie, not normally open and accessible to the public. Uh, but if you're interested in seeing these prairies, uh, the Native Plant has some access, or the Native Plant Society chapter has some access. We know the owners, and um, uh, this is the best way to get to see some of these private sites. This is McKinney, believe it or not. Wow. Yeah. Does much of McKinney look like that anymore? <laughs> no. Very little of North Texas <laughs> looks like that anymore. That's right. So this is a good time to say, because I'm moving pretty fast, we have time to say this is a classic Blackland Prairie remnant that does not get plowed and has not been used for activities that destroyed the native vegetation over the years. Um, and there, of prairies of this type, there is less than one tenth of one percent of the original Blackland Prairie left undisturbed. Um, there was a very large remnant in North Texas, and that is about to be turned into a solar farm. Uh, so we are down to, you know, tiny, small pieces of what used to be widespread in North Texas. And one of our missions is to preserve what's left, to educate about what is left. So cities and private landowners who have a, a miracle like this can preserve that appropriately. So if you decide, hey, this sounds like fun, joining is very easy. You simply go to npsot.org, and that stands for Native Plant Society of Texas. So it's just our acronym. And uh, you can click on the membership uh, link and you can pay online and become a member within minutes. There are different levels of membership um, and they range from the student or limited income memberships on up to uh, people who would like to give a little extra to support the society. Uh, so rather than tell you what the current fees are, it would be best if you just went and checked to see which groups you might want to fit into. Once you're there and creating a membership, you can choose which chapter or multiple chapters you'd like to affiliate with. And there's just a tiny fee to add another chapter. It's just a few dollars per chapter um, once you've joined the state level. You join the state level and you affiliate with chapters. And I believe right now there are about 35 chapters across the state to choose from. So wherever you're listening from on YouTube, you should be able to find a chapter near you. If you happen to be out of state, there are other native plant societies for other states, and I encourage you to check into them as well. And so I believe that's really all that I had for you today, unless you have some questions, Tim. No, that was wonderful, Carol. I really appreciate you being here and uh, sharing this with you. Um, I will, uh, you know, Shades of Green is very, 
it's one of my favorite nurseries to send people to to buy native plants because you have some. Thank you. Uh, yes, we're very proud of that. I mean, that was a program that was started uh, kind of by accident about 15 years ago by our, our grower, Bryce Creelman, who passed away just a few years ago. But he was a plant guy. Um, that was his addiction. He loved native plants. He would travel to state parks around the, country, around the state for his vacations and stop into every little nursery that he could. And he just started growing these out at our tree farm on, in some of our hoop houses. And, you know, now we're at the point today where uh, we grow 120 plus species each wow. year. Um, and I would say about 70% of those are native Texas plants. Of course, that's somewhat of a confusing subject because Texas is so huge. <laughs> just because something is it native is. to Texas doesn't mean it's native to the Blackland Prairie. That's absolutely true. Um, and, and in our own gardens, few of us are local purists. We, we tend to bring in plants from other parts of Texas as well, and some things that may not be native to Texas at all because we simply like them. Uh, so yeah, uh, but you do have more species than many nurseries do, and we appreciate that. Certainly, we, yeah, we're happy to do it. And, and I'm if you can't find me anywhere else, I'm probably at the perennial tables. That has been my passion. <laughs> I shopped at Shades of Green for years before I started working here. Uh, I got the, uh, the backyard certified as a wildlife habitat, a monarch way station, um, almost every certification that I could find back in the day. And was just rabid about native perennials because uh, I, I grew up in North Texas. I'm from this area. I remember trying to plant vegetables in this heavy black clay when I was six and what a pain it was. And I, I, I just love to promote native plants. And like I tell so many of our customers, you know, the, the insects of this area evolved with these plants. You know, butterflies know to seek out purple coneflower for a reason. Exactly. And that's one of the many advantages, you know, that they're, they're, the benefits that they bring to the pollinators that are native to our area, uh, the depth of their roots, how they can withstand this, the, the extremes in temperature and our heavy clay soil because they evolved here. Uh, you know, they, they know that our summers are going to be long and hot. They know that we could have torrential rains in fall. Yeah. <laughs> These plants know this because they're from here. They grew up here and they're so well adapted. And I tell people all the time, if you're looking for a trouble-free plant, Start on native. the native plant section. I tell people they're the Chuck Norris plants. They are tough. They are yeah. resilient and they can withstand a lot of punishment. Um, so they're, you know, used to both droughts and floods, hot weather, cold weather. We get it all here in North Texas. Yeah. And, and it's, it, it can all happen in a single month sometimes. <laughs> yeah, sometimes in a single day. Uh, yeah, it's a whole nother world. So I would encourage anyone who is wanting to learn more about the plants that are native to this Blackland Prairie area, which is this little strip here uh, in North Texas. Uh, does it extend down to how far down south? Down to um, uh, the Austin area and almost to San Antonio. Okay. Um, but it's widest right here in North Texas. Um, and it sort of extends a little bit uh, near I-35 uh, is where it, you'll find the Blackland Prairie. It's quite unique. Um, the soils are a bit of a challenge, but they're also very nutritious. Right. Well, again, Carol, thank you so much. I'd love to have you back maybe in the spring to talk about monarchs. Sure. And how to prepare for those. And we really appreciate you being here. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Carol. We really, really appreciate your time and sharing all the information about the Native Plant Society of Texas. Again, if you want more information, check all the links below. We'll have several of them down there for you. If you want uh, information on the Collin County chapter, that link is below. It's also right here on the bottom of the screen. So check that out. Again, I'm Tim with the Shades of Green Show. Thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.